On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to use the bash money to copy files off an unsecured computer in a matter of seconds. The bash bunny is an automation tool made by Hack5 that can pretend to be other types of hardware devices like a USB keyboard or even an adapter when plugged into a computer. Since regular computers will automatically trust these devices, since they're not usually created with malicious intent, the Bash Bunny is able to exploit this level of trust in order to run some pretty sneaky attacks like keystroke injection, which let it type out pre-programmed scripts at incredible speeds while just pretending to be a regular USB keyboard. Today, we're going to take a look at just how quickly one of these attacks can be executed, and how the Bash Bunny can command your computer into copying over internal files like personal documents and photos, while mounting itself to your computer as a regular USB storage device. To follow along with this video, all you're going to need is a computer with a text editor and a Mark II Bash Bunny. To begin, place your Bash Bunny into arming mode by flipping the switch over to the position that's closest to the USB jack. After you've done this, you can go ahead and plug in your Bash Bunny and wait for it to boot up, which should be indicated by the green LED. Now, after it finishes the boot process, the blue LED indicator should start flashing, letting you know that the Bash Bunny has mounted itself to your computer as a regular USB storage device, which you can now access directly through your file manager. So as you can see here, I have the Bash Bunny pulled up in my file manager, and we have access to all the internal files and folders that are directly on the Bash Bunny's internal memory. So you can see we're able to edit things like the configuration for the Bash Bunny, as well as the payloads that are gonna be running on it, and also the loot folder, which will contain any files that we might exfiltrate from our victim computer later. Now we're first gonna start by taking a look at the payloads folder, and we're gonna head over to switch one, which contains the code that we're gonna be running on the first switch position on the Bash Bunny. Now I'm gonna start by opening up this payload.txt file, which contains the code that we're gonna be taking a look at today. So as you can see, this is relatively simple and also a really short script, thanks to how simple the Bash Bunny scripting language itself is. So taking a look at the Bash Bunny scripting reference site before we go further into how this payload is constructed, you can see that there's a total of five commands that we can use to fully interface with the Bash Bunny and be able to run any attacks that we want on it. So this simple language basically leverages the Bash Bunny's ability to emulate types of USB devices, for example, Ethernet devices or even USB keyboards, and basically gain access to a computer since it inherently trusts these types of devices. So for example, by using the attack mode command we have here, we're able to tell the Bash Bunny to pretend to be something like a USB keyboard and start typing in random commands that might inject malicious code directly into the computer that it's plugged into. For the script that we're gonna be taking a look at today, we leverage its ability to emulate this USB keyboard, as you can see here by setting the attack mode to HID, and then running the following Linux commands, which basically allow us to exfiltrate some of that data directly over to the memory on our Bash Bunny. We also have access to some other commands like LED, which allow us to basically get a quick visual indication of how successful our script might be running, as well as the following other commands, which allow us to invoke something called DuckyScript, which is a separate scripting language, which is gonna allow us to inject keystrokes, such as through the string command by typing um, a random combination of letters, as well as other combinations of different keystrokes that you can see here. For instance, the ability to press various keys or combinations of keys to be able to do things like tab through menus in place of having to click through them through a graphical user interface. So since the Bash Bunny basically pretends to be a normal person typing in these commands at superhuman speed, before we get started, we have to figure out the proper combination of key presses necessary in order to run any of the commands we'll need in order to basically execute our attacks. So taking a look at the outline for the code I have here, you can see that I first set up this script by setting the Bash Bunny into the HID and storage attack mode. So referencing the Bash Bunny documentation, you can see that we have a few different attack modes that we can set the Bash Bunny to, HID being human interface device, which allows us to basically emulate a keyboard and inject keystrokes as I mentioned before, and storage allowing us to basically set up the Bash Bunny as a regular storage device that we can copy over files directly to as it's currently set up um, at the moment. So once we have our Bash Bunny set up to both emulate a USB keyboard, as well as also set itself up as a regular storage device, it's basically set to start injecting custom code into the computer it's plugged into, and also use that in order to copy files directly over to itself. So after it's set up the HID and storage attack mode, you can see that down here it invokes the following quack commands, 
which called DuckyScript to basically open up a Linux terminal and inject the following command. So as you can see here, using the bash bunny quack command, which is basically going to call um, the separate scripting language for DuckyScript, after the quack command is called, it should allow us to enter a combination of keystrokes or key presses that we want to run in order to do something like spawn open a terminal and run custom commands. So you can see here, the first one that I have set up is Control Alt T, which is gonna be a shortcut on Linux for opening up a terminal. Since this is gonna be the quickest way to copy over files just by using a single line command. So as you can see here, I can do this manually just by doing Control Alt T on my keyboard. And once this Linux terminal opens up, I'll have the ability to copy over any internal files on my computer directly over to storage devices that are mounted over to it. So in this case, as you can see, the Bash Bunny mounts itself as a regular USB device which means that through a Linux terminal, I have the ability to directly copy files over to it. So since we currently have our Bash Bunny set up in arming mode, we can get a quick preview of what this might look like. So as you can see here, the Bash Bunny is currently mounted to our computer, and I'm gonna head back over to the root directory of the Bash Bunny just by clicking here. And the place that I wanna copy over any of our files to is gonna be under this loot folder. Now, if I wanted to copy files from a Linux computer, the command that I could use to do that would be the following from this um, file, as you can see here, which is gonna be cp followed by the directory that I wanna copy from. So in my case, I'm gonna set a static directory, which is at tilde slash pictures slash cat dash pics slash asterisk, which will allow me to select basically any file that's contained under this directory. Now, taking a look at the folder that I have set up for this demonstration, you can see that the cat pics directory contains a variety of different messed up cat pictures that we're gonna be exfiltrating and copying over to the Bash Bunny. So before we get started crafting or customizing this payload for a victim computer that you might wanna target, you'll first have to know the location of the files that you wanna copy and also the operating system that the computer you're targeting this against is gonna be running. So in my case, since this is Linux, I'm able to use the following Linux commands like I just showed you here, as well as this key press combination that allows me to quickly pull up the terminal shortcut. Now, if you're gonna be running this on something like Windows or Mac OS, this shortcut might look different for you, as well as the command that you're gonna have to use in order to copy over these files. Now, going back over to my terminal, now that I have the location of where I wanna copy these files from, I can go ahead and just hit space, and then we're gonna go ahead and type the second argument, which is gonna contain the location of where I want to copy these files over to. So in my case, this is gonna be where the Bash Bunny is mounted to, which can be found under slash media, slash um, the name of the current user. So in my case, that would be under Alex, which can also be generally selected with the environment variable um, dollar sign followed by user, and then the name of the USB storage device. So in this case, that would be bash bunny, as you can see um, pulled up in my files here, followed by the subdirectory that I wanna copy the files over to, which in my case is going to be loot. So I can copy that over to loot and then add another slash to indicate that this is the folder to copy the files to. And then finally, if I wanted to do something like a recursive copy to copy any subfolders that might be under the cat pictures directory, I could do that by adding tac r, and of course you can also make this more specific to certain file types that you might wanna filter out for since you're gonna be injecting this into a terminal and have full freedom to basically alter these um, Linux commands. So for example, if I wanted to filter out for certain file types, I could even have this distinguished for things that are just .png files by having it select anything that ends in PNG. So if I go ahead and just run this command, this should go ahead and copy everything from the catpix folder that's a PNG file over to the loop folder on my bash bunny which you can see has successfully copied over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete these since we're gonna be automating this demonstration just in a second through the Bash Bunny. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these files. But as you can see here, just by using this one simple command line argument, we were able to successfully copy over these files straight over to the internal storage on the Bash Bunny. Now heading back over to the payload, you can see that I run this exact command after the terminal finishes spawning, and I even append a second command, which allows me to exit out of the terminal immediately after it finishes executing, so that way it leaves no trace of the files having been copied. You can also see that I've added a few other ducky script commands here, such as delay, to compensate for the amount of time it might take for the terminal to open. Like if I type Control alt t you can see it takes a second for this to open, so we'll want to wait a little before it starts typing this command. 
And you can see that I've also added the following custom key command for enter to run this command after it's finished typing from the Bash Bunny. If you want to check out some of the other commands you can use with DuckyScript, you can find that reference on this site here, which I'll link in the description below. Now wrapping up with the script, you can see it's just as simple as setting the attack mode that we want to place our Bash Bunny into, as well as the keystrokes that we'll want to run in order to pretend to be someone that's typing on this computer that we're going to be exfiltrating the files from. Now one last command you can see that I've used here is the following LED command that basically will give us a visual gauge of how far along or successful the program is currently running. So using the LED command that's built into the Bash Bunny scripting language, we're able to use a few different preset colors to basically indicate which stage of the attack is currently running, and even the success rate of these attacks if we wanted to. So as you can see here, I've set the LEDs to give us an indication of when our attack mode has been properly set up, as well as when it's also executing the following commands. So first it'll start up with the default LED setup color, which is going to be a solid magenta, as indicated from the description here. And then once it starts the keystroke injection attack, the LED will change over to the stage one color, which is gonna be a single yellow blink, followed by a rapid green blink to indicate that the program has finished running. So once you have this entire payload constructed, you can go ahead and just save it directly to the payload.txt file on your Bash Bunny, exit out of your text editor, and simply unmount the Bash Bunny. Now with the script set up on your Bash Bunny, you can simply flip the switch over to position one, and it's ready to be plugged into your victim's computer. So the Bash Bunny will first start up with the green indicator LED, again, showing us that it's booting up. So once the Bash Bunny finishes booting up, you can see that it switches over to a solid magenta color. Now after it finishes mounting, you can see a single yellow flash once it starts injecting keystrokes, quickly followed by green as it exits out and finishes the program without leaving a trace of our data exfiltration. After removing the Bash Bunny from the victim computer, placing it back into arming mode and plugging it into our computer, the Bash Bunny mounts as a normal USB device and we're able to access the loot folder where we can find our successfully obtained cat pictures. With the ability to expand memory over microSD or even toggle between multiple payloads just at the flip of a switch, the Bash Bunny makes it a super easy process to get started with automating tasks or even attacks like the one we looked at today. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you have any suggestions for upcoming topics you want to see covered on this channel, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind or drop a comment to let me know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.